Hey everyone, my name is William Shaker, and today we're going to be giving you a three-month review of our home. We've been living inside of this Cascade camper for the last two months. For someone that has never slept inside of a camper before, or a van, or lived inside of anything else except for a home or an apartment, so getting into campers and buying this one for the first time, I knew absolutely nothing getting into it, but I did some research. I bought, I watched a ton of YouTube videos like you are today, and I learned as much as I could about the company as well as the camper and what it provided. At the time when I purchased this camper, it was $8,000, and everything that you see here was included inside of that price point. With the exception of the rear windows, which is an $800 option, and you can get the side windows as well, which is another $800 option. Just recently, Cascade Campers has increased their price by $300, but I believe it's just marginal, and considering the price of everything is skyrocketing at the current moment, I think $300 is pretty marginal, and it's not very substantial. And at the same time, you're getting a lot for your money, which we will talk about in this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the overall build quality. What do you exactly get with your $8,000? And is this something that will last? I'm at a point in my life where I'm in my mid-40s, I prefer something that is better quality, my standards have gone up, and if I'm going to live inside of something, I want it to make sure that it feels quality, and I want to make sure that it doesn't feel cheap, and when I'm driving, it doesn't make rattling noises and whatnot. Cabinets are very high quality. The fit and finish feels very good high quality. There are some caveats. As an example, I don't know what these plastic edges are called, but they are scratching pretty easily. If you look for it, you, it is starting to develop little nicks and scratches here and there. That's the only gripe I have with the fit and finish of this, but as far as the wood is concerned, it's very solid, and I think it'll last the life of the van itself. I purposely bought this van as a brand new van, but I chose this van because I wanted to get the Cascade Camper. Besides that, uh, the couch slash bed is super easy to operate. There's a little strap, pull on the strap, and the bed opens up, and it becomes a full-size bed. You can literally fit two people on this bed. The entire Cascade Camper build comes in three separate sections. You have the countertop, which houses the sink, as well as the refrigerator, and then you have the couch slash bed, and then you have the floor. So you have three different sections, three different parts that make up this camper. As far as the floor is concerned, it's a very thick piece of wood that makes up the flooring. It's similar to having like a rhino bed for your pickup truck. I'm not really sure exactly what it's meant for, but they have used it in this van and it's super durable. Like this thing will last the life of the van itself. The only exception is that whenever you're pulling these drawers in and out, it does scratch the bottom. So I wish they put some kind of liner on the drawers themselves. So this way, when you're taking the drawers out and pull it, putting it back in, it doesn't scratch the surface of the floor. For people that are very detail oriented, such as myself, it can be a bit of a niggle. As far as electronics are concerned, this van is equipped with all of it. You like, you're really not lacking anything uh, that the bigger vans do. It comes with an AGM 75 amp hour battery. It's got a 115 watt solar panel. That's a that's one of those flexible solar panels that gets glued to the roof. It's perfect for stealth. No one really knows that it's up there unless you're six foot five tall. The other thing is that it comes with a solar charge controller and a little screen that you can see how much solar you're getting at any point during the day. It also comes with a battery doctor that's attached to the 75 amp hour AGM battery. And anytime that you have your car on, your alternator is charging the house battery, which is perfect. So this way you can be off grid. I've been living in this van full time for two months and I'm in sunny San Diego. It is always sunny here, but I do struggle to have power on all the time. In the morning, I look at the battery levels and it's very low. So if I wanna use my diesel heater, I have to make sure that, that I have the car on first just so I can generate some real power to the battery so this way I can start using electronics once again. That's something that we're gonna get into a little bit towards the end as well because I do have a couple of suggestions for you if you decide to buy this fan such as the upgrades that you need to make to it. And last but not least, there's a refrigerator, and this refrigerator is a real refrigerator. So whenever I do cook, I usually keep all my foods inside the refrigerator, and then I warm it up with my hot logic. For one person, such as myself, living in this van, the refrigerator is plenty enough. It's a Dometic CF25, and I believe it holds 24 cans of beer as it's advertised. But I have no idea, because I've never stored beer inside of it. The only thing I store inside of it is food, and I hardly drink. And last but not least, there is a water pump. Yes, my friends, 
you get a water pump and a sink. So this way you can brush your teeth in the morning and if you're out in the boondocks, maybe you can wash your face and your hair as well as washing dishes if you need to. Now let's talk a little bit about how much storage you get inside of this van. As I mentioned, I've lived inside of this van as of November 1st and I don't feel that there is any lack of storage. But that could also be because I'm pretty much a minimalist. I really don't own too many things. When I decided to start van life, I sold all my possessions. At this point, everything that I own inside of this van is everything that I own. I don't own anything else except for two motorcycles and they're inside of my storage unit. I generally like to ride bikes if I'm not inside of my van. So that's kind of like my hobby per se. And everything of mine is stored inside of the five drawers underneath this bed. The five drawers is enough not only for my clothing, but also for my recording accessories because I'm a content creator and it also holds my pots and pans and cookware and things like that. Aside from that, uh, you get three little drawers inside the cabinet. There's also space behind the refrigerator, which I keep things that I use quite often. There's also room behind this bed slash couch. And between all of these spaces, there's enough for me to store everything that I own and I don't feel like it's lacking at all. One of the benefits of van life is that I go to a store now and I look at things and I'm like, hmm, I don't have room for that so I don't want it. So it's actually a, a plus for me because I have all the clothes I need, I have all the electronics I need, I have all the accessori accessories I need, my cookware is complete, I'm able to live and I'm able to function with everything inside of this van and it's worked out quite well for me. Everybody's a different size and I'm not really that tall and as you can see I'm pretty fit. And of course I live with my dog Rambo. I don't know if you guys can see him but he's kind of he's laying down and sleeping on the floor right now. But anyways from edge to edge this bed is 65 inches and that pretty much equates to a person who's six foot three can sleep on this bed. As far as the width is concerned it's 45 inches from edge to edge so that can be a pretty large person or that could be two medium-sized people sleeping in this bed up to six foot three. Now, do I suggest two gigantic people that are six foot three sleep in this van? Maybe, maybe not. It all depends on your preferences. But for someone such as myself, I am five foot five, five foot six, hovering around there, and I weigh somewhere around 135, 140. It's perfect for me. Not only is it perfect for me, but it's also perfect for my dog. My dog sleeps on one side, I sleep on the other side. It's equivalent to two people sleeping in here. And so for us, it's worked out perfectly. So the question is, would I buy this van once again? Absolutely, I would buy it once again, but there are a couple of caveats. Number one, I think the power supply in this van is pretty inadequate. Cascade Campers has been around for three years and I think they've done a fantastic job. This van has had many iterations. I think they've done hundreds of little improvements. When you're driving this van, you don't hear any rattles. It's very, very well made. Besides that, I think the electronics is something that has fallen behind. They haven't really put that much attention towards the electronics. As an example, it's got a 75 amp hour AGM battery. And in today's world, technology has really, really advanced. As of this video, the AGM battery that's equipped in this van is $269, I believe. But for $369 or somewhere around that price, you can get a 100 amp hour lithium battery. But as I started researching it more and more, I realized that an AGM battery can only be used 50% of the way at most. That only means 35 amp hours of actual battery that you can use per given day. And if you don't have the 35 amp hours charged up all the way, then that means that in the morning when you wake up and you turn on your heater or use some kind of an appliance, it may not be good enough. So you have to undo the curtains, turn the car on, and then come back inside and then do whatever you need to do. It's a little inconvenient and it gives away the stealth part of trying to be stealthy. That's just my opinion about it. Uh, with a lithium battery, you can use it all the way up to 80% of the capacity of it. So if you get a 100 amp hour lithium battery, you can use 80% of that and still have 20% left for margin. There's just so many benefits to having a lithium ion battery pack. And that's one thing that this van does not have. And I wish it did. Other than that, um, I also wish it had a second solar panel and it doesn't have that. It only has one solar panel. And I just think it's not enough because one solar panel on the most brightest days will only give you about 3.5 amps of power. Even though it's rated at 5.9, realistically, you'll never get all that. So that's niggle number one. Niggle number two is that it's not properly insulated. 
The ceiling is very properly insulated. The floor, I'm not really that concerned about because you have that one inch thick floor that's on the bottom here. But the parts I am concerned about are the exposed metal that's here. It doesn't have any insulation. So I wish it was better insulated. Uh, insulation really doesn't cost a whole lot of money. For $150, you can get proper insulation by using something from a company called Havelock Wool. You can plug up the little holes that are all in here and fill everything up. Um, aside from that, there's different ways of insulating this fan as I've been learning and I wish it had all that stuff before the van was actually delivered. And then uh, niggle number three is the couch cushions. Some people may like the firmness of them, some people may not, but as an option to have memory foam as well. When you're sleeping in this every single night, you do sometimes wake up with a sore back or a sore lower back or maybe a shoulder or something like that. Like most people, if you've slept in memory foam and very good mattresses all your life, coming to this may not give you the same experience. So that's probably another thing that I would change in this van. These three niggles, these are all things that Cascade campers can make additional money with. So as an example, you come and buy this van for $8,000. The $800 option for the windows, I totally get. There should also be other options as well. All other companies have it. Charging another four or $500 for proper insulation. I understand it takes time and money for materials. It's okay to charge that. People, Some people want it. So definitely have that option. The second thing I would suggest is give people a better option for the cushions. Memory foam is probably the best thing that you can offer at the current moment. It may cost an extra couple of hundred dollars, but that's totally fine. I would also gladly pay that. And last but not least, I personally wouldn't mind paying a little extra for a better lithium battery instead of an AGM. It costs a hundred dollars more for lithium. I, I would gladly pay it. Maybe the lithium DC to DC charger would cost more money and that'll factor into the cost. I would gladly pay it. So all these things are extra. And so if Cascade campers wanted to make a little bit extra money, and I think they should, in this environment, people like options, give it to them. But otherwise, would I buy this van once again? Absolutely. I think it's, it's a high quality van. You get a lot of things for the money that you spend. And uh, $8,000 in today's market is really nothing. And if you're looking to buy a van for yourself, such as a Dodge Ram Pro Master CD like I have, and you're looking to build it yourself, great, you can build it yourself. But if you want something that's already pre-built for you and you have absolutely no knowledge of building a van on your own, then do as I did. Contact Cascade Campers. They're not paying me to tell you this. I'm not endorsed by them and let them build you a van. But the three things that I mentioned, such as insulation, a lithium ion battery pack that's better, as well as better cushions, you might wanna to have to upgrade on your own because those are not options that they give you. As a matter of fact, there are no other options except for maybe changing out the color of the curtains and things like that. You can choose that when you get there. But uh, for uh, an entry level company such as Cascade Campers, they provide a, a wonderful product and I highly, highly recommend them. And that's been pretty much it for my three month review. I do plan on making a six month as well as a one year review as well to give you a further update because I do plan to change to a lithium ion battery pack pretty soon and I will upgrade the cushions as well. And of course, I'm gonna add some insulation. So stay tuned for that. I'll give you guys an update on how things progress. And while you're at it, go back and check out my van tour video because that has a ton of information about my van and everything that I own in here. So guys, until the next episode, I will see you later. Take care. Ciao for now.